to, if you've got an RFA or an RFP, trying to make sure that it gets in the hands of your proposed subrecipients early, because um, certainly with RFPs, we may need to be p taking objections to those contract uh, clauses at the time we're submitting the proposal. Well, the subrecipient deserves the right to weigh in. Uh, on that as well, because of course they'll ha they'll flow down and mm -hmm. they'll have to be subject to them as well. But even if it's not an RFP, if it's some kind of an RFA or anything that's really unusual um, about the terms, I think that's when we need to stop and talk with our subrecipients, if possible, before the proposal um, is submitted, so we can at least have a general sense, even if it's just a call between the two sponsored research offices, to say. Are you going to be okay if we have to accept a, a 7,000 clause? Um, are you going to be okay um, or something you know that prevents uh, foreign nationals from working on the project? Um, whatever the clause might be that would be um, uncomfortable, uh, or and it can be as simple as you know we're going to have a reduced indirect cost rate. It, it really mm -hmm. ranges yes. quite a yeah. bit, but if you know of some particular issue that's going on that. You might give you pause. To me, it's kind of a golden rule sort of thing. Is that's when I better be telling my subrecipient up front, because mm -hmm. otherwise I may lose them at award stage, and that makes my institution look bad. 